Today we'll be going over the entire history of indie games. Believe it or not, indie games date back all the way to the first video game ever created. In October 1958, physicist William Higginbottom created what is thought to be the first video game ever. It was a very simple tennis game, similar to the classic 1970s video game Pong. AAA games didn't start popping up until the late 90s, with arguably the first AAA game being Final Fantasy VII. Since games were simpler in the early days, games didn't need more than 5 to 10 developers. But as the standard became higher, it became harder for indie devs to compete. The years 1985 to 2004 was the era of isolated hobbyist game engines. The first hobbyist game engine tools were for the Commodore 64. These toolkits range from pinball to shoot 'em up and perhaps most importantly, Activision Game Maker. Most of the games made with these tools have unfortunately been lost to time. The reason being, the people who made games with these tools didn't have any proper ways to trade or distribute them. But even today, some are still playable if you use an emulator. In this era, there was a lot of game engines going around such as RPG Maker, which was a series of JRPG creation programs. The indie games community was very fragmented, each existing as separate bubble communities with little collaboration or overlap. Typically, even the best games made in engines such as Game Maker wouldn't be popular outside of the people who used that specific engine. This would all change around the year 2005. A few major independent developers began promoting themselves explicitly as indie developers. Also in 2005, Cave Story was translated by Shih Tzu of Aeon Genesis. Cave Story was an enormously popular game and brought millions of people into the awareness that individuals are still making games on their own. Before this time, there was no cohesion in the indie games community, and only much smaller isolated forums and communities existed, the largest of which was probably the Dexterity Forums, which would later become the Indie Gamer Forums. Also during this time, big gaming platforms began welcoming indie games on board. Platforms such as Steam, Nintendo WiiWare, and Sony's PS3 downloadable game service PlayStation Network all began to carry indie games regularly. Indie games also became more popular on mobile phones, and Adobe Flash games offered a whole new world of creation, but the sadly shut down Adobe Flash games deserved their own video. In 2007, indie games would come a lot closer to what they are today. Indie developers are of course not uniform. There are different schools of thought as to what indie games are or should be about. Out of the indie community arose an informal group of indie developers mockingly called New Wave Indie by Derek Yu, creator of Spelunky. The term has no solid meaning, but these quote-unquote New Wave Indies generally believe in ideas and experimentation above tradition and polished graphics. In response to Yu's characterization of this subgroup, formed a term for its opposite, GDC Indies, which are indie who want to make games similar to the mainstream ones, rather than indies who want to break away and explicitly reject many of the standards and traditions of the mainstream games industry. Basically, the difference is, new wave indies generally hate or are bored by what mainstream games are doing, and they also want to take games in a totally new and different direction never before taken, often by experimenting and rejecting standard conventions, whereas GDC indies love games of all kinds, even mainstream games, and don't have as strong of a dislike for the traditions and practices of the mainstream games industry. As the independent industry flourished, with rising ecosystems fueling further developments, it became clear that indies were here to stay. Certain genres began to bloom in popularity and soon came to epitomize indie culture. These three titles, Super Meat Boy and Fez alongside Minecraft, would come to define the indie golden era. Well, the first indie golden era. As well as cementing many of the key aspects of the industry in the minds of the public. On August 6, 2008, Jonathan Blow released Braid. The Xbox Live Arcade title introduced players to the concept of personal stories with highly unique aesthetics. The idea that you were playing someone's idea rather than a corporation's budget became central to indie games. Following Blow's dreamy entrance, a gargantuan player stepped into the arena. On the 17th of May 2009, Minecraft opened its pixel-heavy servers. Other than celebrating the potential of the pixel and demonstrating its power within a gaming landscape obsessed with beige realism, Minecraft offered a success 
success story that encouraged countless others and brought press rooms knocking. Notch, the creator of Minecraft, was hailed as a hero, a godlike figure of indie creativity. Amidst all this success, more distribution sites began to take advantage of the immense popularity of indie games, hungrily eyeing Steam's monopoly. Humble Bundle was launched in 2010, encapsulating and modernizing the take a penny, leave a penny foundations of the industry. While itch.io was founded in March 2013 and still offers a classically underground indie experience. With the success stories piling up in the newsroom and new developers' fingers itching for a piece of the pie, 2015 saw the independent industry reach a boiling point. The popularity of platforms, prominence of godlike developers, and ease of creation and distribution soon brought mer of an indie apocalypse. The indie apocalypse was based on a series of fears and unanswered questions, spurred by a sudden influx of poorly produced titles. Shovelware threatened to eat through the Steam ecosystem, and gamers began looking at the iOS App Store as a terrifying future of their PC gaming experience. But 2015 also saw some very good indie titles such as Undertale, Axiom Verge, and Soma. The next year, 2016, being arguably better with Superhot and Stardew Valley. In 2017, we got Cuphead and Hollow Knight. In 2018, we got Celeste, Dead Cells, and Crosscode, just to name a few from each year. That's not to say we haven't gotten any good indie games after those years. I mean, like, we got Omori, Cult of the Lamb, and, uh, yeah. As games get easier and easier to create with tools like Unreal Engine 5, we see more and more amazing indie games. I have no doubt in my mind that we'll see more creativity and more innovation from these indie devs. Anyways, guys, that's gonna have to be it for today. If you like this video, make sure to click that big red subscribe button to never miss another future upload. Like the video, it would really help me out, and it also pushes my content out to more people. I hope everybody has a great rest of their day, and I'm out.